Hey everybody, it's me Fadi and welcome to another episode of how to build and maintain a reef aquarium. Today I'll speak about the regular maintenance that we do in our aquarium and how to make water changes and how to clean the tank. When keeping a reef tank, we need to properly care for our fish and corals and make sure that our equipments are working instead of waiting for them to fail to make action. In this episode, I will talk about the regular tasks that I perform daily, weekly, monthly and yearly. Let's start with daily tasks. First and most obvious is feeding your fish. There is a wide variety of fish food available. You need to pick a high quality fish food to keep your fish at optimal health. Usually you will need to feed twice daily. You need to research each of your fish to know if a certain fish has a special diet requirements. And remember, try not to overfeed as leftover food will break down into nitrate and phosphate and other organic wastes that will affect the water quality. I talked in more details about how to feed the fish in episode number 10. I also made another video that shows how I made my own fish recipe. Visual inspection of aquarium livestock. Look closely at each of your fish for signs of diseases like egg and aggression wounds from another fish that may need to be removed. Scan each coral to see if it's healthy and that there are no pests present like acro eating flatworms and nudibranchs. The best time to check on your fish is during feeding. Visual inspection of aquarium equipment. Spend a few minutes each day verifying that your pumps, wave makers, heaters, chillers, calcium reactor and lights are working properly. Monitor aquarium pH and temperature. Check tank temperature daily to make sure it is within acceptable range. Having an aquarium controller will give constant monitoring for your tank and gives you alerts if the temperature and pH are out of acceptable range. Top off evaporated water. If you don't use an auto top off system, you'll need to top off water daily. This is to minimize any swings in salinity. Dose additives and supplements. If you don't have a programmable dosing bump or calcium reactor or other automated dosing methods for supplementing calcium and alkalinity, you will need to daily dose calcium and alkalinity and other needed supplements. I talked about the different methods of supplementing calcium, alkalinity, magnesium and other major and trace elements in the previous episodes, in episode number 16 and 19, so you can go watch them for more details. For weekly maintenance, you will need to perform water tests. Test important water parameters at least once each week. The main parameters to test for are salinity, calcium, alkalinity and magnesium. Even if you are using an automated testing device like the Neptune Trident, it is a good idea to perform manual tests every now and then to double check. I also talked about water testing in more details in episode number 15. Water changes. You can perform water changes every week, bi-weekly or monthly. I like to do weekly water change. I feel that doing a relatively small water change is easier than doing a larger one every month. You can siphon and clean the sand during water change and use a turkey paster or a small power head to blow out any trapped detritus that has acclimated on your rock work. There are many salts to choose from. You need to pick a salt that is high quality, have constant parameters and also always available for you. And most importantly, close to the parameters you try to keep in your reef aquarium. I target 420 for calcium, 8.5 to 9 for alkalinity, and 1300 for magnesium. So I mix salts from both Red Sea, Blue Bucket and Black Bucket to achieve the desired parameters I target. I mix the salt in a large enough container, about 10% of the total system volume, around 20 gallons. First, I fill the container with RODI water, add a heater if needed, after that I add the salt slowly and mix. Each salt is different, so the amount of salt needed to make a salt water can vary slightly between each brand. As a general guideline, you can use half cup of salt for every one gallon of RODI water. After that, this is the salinity with a refractometer and adjust salinity by adding small amounts of salt or RODI water until you reach the desired level at 1.26 specific gravity or 35 salinity. And remember, always add salt to the water, not the opposite. Another thing, 
check the instruction for each salt. For example, Red Sea Pro Salt, known as Black Bucket, recommends water temperature at 68 Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius. And not to mix for more than 4 hours. After mixing the salt, I turn off the return pump and by using a maxi jet pump, I start removing water from the sump until it reaches this mark. After that, I start adding newly mixed salt water to the sump until it reaches the full mark. Some reefers have more advanced automated water changing system and water mixing stations. Clean protein skimmer collection cup. Drain the collection cup and clean skimmer neck once per week. Of course, every system is different and you may need to clean the cup and the skimmer more often or less often depending on the skimmer and your aquarium. Clean and scrub algae from tank interior. Algae grows quickly in a reef aquarium. Using a magnetic algae scrapper once per week will keep your tank wall algae free. Most magnetic algae scrappers can be kept inside your aquarium, which is not only convenient, but also means you never have to get your hand wet while cleaning. If you have a glass aquarium and you are dealing with some really stubborn algae growth like coralline algae, you can use cleaners with blade attachment. Wipe down tank exterior. I wipe the exterior of the tank with glass cleaner or some vinegar. And you can use acrylic polisher if you have an acrylic tank. Clean filter socks and filter pads. Filter socks and pads can become clogged rather quickly. Detritus and leftover food trapped in a filter sock or pad will break down to nitrate and phosphate and other nutrients, eventually lowering water quality. For now, I don't use filter socks in my tank. However, if you are using them on your tank, you can machine wash them with some bleach to clean them. Check the water level in the ATO reservoir and add water to fill it. You don't want to allow the auto top of pump to run dry. This will depend on the size of the reservoir and the time of year. For monthly maintenance, I change carbon and phosphate media. Carbon and phosphate media should be changed about once per month using a media reactor like two little fishies phospan reactor for carbon or phosphate media not only makes changing out the media easier it also maximizes the performance of the media itself every three months clean pumps and power heads in reef aquarium we have several pumps like wave makers return pumps and skimmer pump it's recommended to clean the pumps to remove coralline algae so I soak them with 1 to 1 vinegar to warm RO water and use a brush to clean the impeller and housing. Keeping your pumps and power heads clean will make them last and perform like new. Clean and calibrate props. Use a soft toothbrush to clean props. Gently brush the tip of the probe to get rid of anything that has built up or accumulated on it. Calibrate the probe afterward to ensure it is still providing accurate readings. Every six months, clean some and scrap coralline algae growing in the sump. Replace aquarium lights. If you are using metal halide or T5 lights, you will need to replace these lights every six to 12 months. If you are using LED lights, there is no need to change the bulbs. Calcium reactor maintenance. Every six months, I top off the calcium reactor media with the new media. And I also check the CO2 cylinder if it's empty and need refilling. What is better is to have an extra CO2 cylinder that you can use until you refill the original one. Replace RODI filter media. Most RO equipment manufacturer recommend replacing the sediment, carbon and DI cartridges every 6 to 12 months depending on individual use. Use a TDS meter to determine when it's time to make a change. Your RO membrane will last for about 2 years, and maybe even more. Every year I replace the entire media inside the calcium reactor, I throw it away, and I clean the entire reactor body and fill it with a new media. Replace controller probes. Probes that monitor pH and ORP should be replaced every 1 year to 1 and a half year. If the probe is becoming difficult to calibrate, or losing calibration pretty quickly, it's time to replace it. Replace the heater in your aquarium every two to three years just to be safe.
regular maintenance is one of the most important thing to make sure that your aquarium is running at its best. When you combine good maintenance habits with patience, wise and healthy livestock selections, most likely you will have a successful tank. That's it for today. We reach to the end of this series on how to build and maintain a reef aquarium. I know there is a lot of topics that we didn't cover in this uh, series. So if you have any questions or have a special topic you want me to talk about in the next episodes, please leave a comment uh, in the comment section below. And uh, thanks for watching and see you soon in the next video.